Hello, and welcome to the third video in the History of Gala Games series. In the last video, we covered 2019, when Gala Games, our blockchain game partners as they were known then, was first created. We listened in on one of the calls where they recruited Connect United's team of marketers to start selling nodes for them. We also saw pictures of the Townstar launch party in Las Vegas, where they sold even more nodes in order to raise money for the new company. Finally, we tagged along in Wyoming, when the Gala team, that was then called Arcade, and Green United held events at a hackathon in order to get their names out there. Now, based on some of the promises they made to sell nodes in 2019, you can tell the founders were still feeling out what direction the company was going to go. There was a heavy emphasis on ROI and referrals in the early days, and we'll see that continue into 2020. Also, we'll start to see cracks in the tight relationships between Gala Games and Wright Thurston's other projects. So let's jump into it. After the Wyoming Hackathon, things got quiet for a little while, but that all changed in March 2020 when the Gala Discord went live. Up until then, all communication with the community was done via methods like email and Microsoft back office. People were losing their minds about how great Townstar was. To understand the excitement, you'll have to keep in mind the general state of cryptocurrency gaming markets in 2020 and how limited it was. Townstar was one of the first blockchain games that actually felt like something from a big studio. Compared to the competition during those days, it's easy to see how Townstar was looked at by many as blockchain gaming really coming into its own. Discord also shows us nodes continue to evolve. There are some truly strange posts talking about how node earnings would work. And again, there's a lot of emphasis on referrals and downstreams. Here's an example. The box coin they were talking about was an early version of the Townstar token. You would supposedly be able to mine these tokens with in-game NFTs like the farm bot, and we'll be talking more on those later. We see here that one box coin goes to the player, one to blockchain game partners, our Gala Games, one to Sandbox, who was the developer of Townstar, and one to the node that processes the transaction. Eric also mentions mining other coins and then using those coins to purchase Gala. Legal issues aside, it's an interesting idea, but people were buying nodes based on statements like this, and I can't see a single part of it that actually happened. We shouldn't cry too hard for the node owners, because anyone buying nodes at this time probably made out like bandits during the 21 bull run. But these hard pivots by Gala are going to be a recurring theme, and not everyone made out as lucky as the original node buyers. We also see some early instances of things changing after assurances were made. In response to someone's question, Eric seems to guarantee that there won't be any half-off sales for nodes in the future. Of course, months later, there's a half-off sale. Now look, companies need money and I don't begrudge them having sales to do it. So it's not the sales part that bothers me, it's the guarantee. This is probably one of the first examples of a trend that we'll see over and over. Things are said, assurances and guarantees are going to be made in order to sell things and raise revenue. Those guarantees will even be honored right up until it becomes inconvenient to do so. Then those assurances are discarded for the greater good. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. Shut it! Something else interesting in this screenshot is Eric's reference to beta nodes. We'll see more about these nodes in the future when we review the node ecosystem blueprint. Since that hasn't been released yet, it'll need to wait. Now let's fast forward to June of 2020. Remember that up until this point, people running nodes didn't actually have any tokens to trade it was all soft tokens on a database somewhere that was being tracked by blockchain game partners. Supposedly, you could see it on your node software, but that was it. That all changed in June. Gala minted their first actual token. It was an 1155 off of the Townstar smart contract. Here's the actual token address, and you'll find a link in the description below. I've confirmed this with people who received the token back when it was first sent out, and Benefactor also announced the contract in Discord. Starting on June 19th, there were roughly 22 billion of these tokens that were batch minted and handed out to node owners, referrers, and Gala themselves. But how did they come up with that 22 billion? What determined how many of the Gala soft tokens were awarded each day that had now been turned into an 1155? The answer lies in a PDF that people received by email around this time. Tons of interesting stuff in here. As always, a link to the entire document will be in the description for your own perusal. Let's go over some of the highlights. It says here that 50 billion tokens were gonna to be created. Of those, 25 billion, or half of the total supply, were going to be distributed the first year. Every year after, the number of tokens distributed would be halved. 
Just beneath the halving schedule part, there's this line. We began distributing gala tokens July 22nd, 2019. Now, since they didn't have the 1155 back in 2019, I imagine they're talking about the soft token. Still, that means that they've been distributing these soft tokens for almost a year at this point. For the sake of the following calculations, we'll use June 18th, 2020, which is the last day of distributions before the 1155s were minted. From July 22nd, 2019 until June 18th, 2020 is 332 days. What I find fascinating about this early distribution is that it's not just the distribution to the node owners or to the referrers that's been happening for almost a year. It's also the distribution to Gallup. Let's look at how the split is broken down at the time of this document. 25% is going to the nodes, the referrers, and the players, and sounds like the other 75% is going to Gala Games. They do list plans to reduce that to 10% later, but let's stick to that 75% number right now. Using the numbers they provided in this document of 68,493,150.68 tokens being distributed each day, 75% of that, or a Gala share that isn't being split between nodes referrers, is 51,369,863.01 Gala. That would mean that Gala Games, in the first year until June 18, 2020, received 17,054,794,519.32 Gala. If we look at the transactions for that token on June 18, 2020, we can see a matching transfer from the contract to one of Gala's wallets for 17,054,794,848. The mathematically inclined out there will notice that there's a 328 Gala difference between those two numbers. Well, I can account for 309 of that, which was in a separate transaction the same day. If any super sleuths out there can account for that missing Gala, I'd appreciate it. Stuff like this just bugs me. For now, my money is on they just didn't care about 19 Gala. After all, they just handed themselves over one-third of the total amount of Gala ever going to be minted. Keep in mind, we're not even done with the first year yet. We still have another few billion to be distributed. Now, I'm not pointing all this out to say it's unfair. After all, they can split the distribution however they want, and things changed quite a bit regarding this a year or so later. The reason I'm pointing this out is in the recently released blueprint, there's this quote. Setting aside the definition of pre-mint and the arguments that awarding yourself one-third of the total supply before the token is even created might indeed qualify, it was that bit about only keeping two billion in reserve and burning the other 21 billion that caught my eye. We'll go into the reasons behind this voluntary burning and the benefits they received, both definite and possible, in a future video. But there's been plenty of questions about how Gala Games even had that 21 billion to burn to begin with. Well, now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Another part of this quote that caught my eye was the comment about being completely independent of any external investment rounds. We've already talked about the fact that the founders put in money, but from reading the blueprint, you'd expect that outside investment was never pursued. That's actually incorrect. In the Discord, there are multiple instances of Eric looking for outside investment in the early stages of Gala. He even comments on one offer he made to an investor to sell 10% of the company for $5 million. Whoever that invested was is probably kicking themselves right now. Whether outside investment was sought or not really isn't important. Again, the only reason I point these things out is that this is another example of something Gala said that it's at least partially misleading. What makes it worse is that it didn't even need to be included. There's a lot of this self-congratulatory backslapping on Twitter, in the Discord, and in this blueprint that doesn't even need to be there. They'd be better served just doing what they said they would, and then they could brag on that all they like about it. Now that would be worth some backslapping. Okay, enough with the preaching. Let's get back to the document. They talk about holding a vote for a new distro after the tokens are minted. Now I've talked to numerous people and nobody can remember a vote held any time during 2020 that had to do with the distribution. Since the split was still 25-75 when I found them at the end of the year, and there was no pools like the ones that they're talking about here, this distro vote was likely delayed. The first distro vote that I can confirm was held in March of 2021, and we'll cover that in the 2021 video. Next, they talk about nodes. It sounds like the original way of rewarding NFTs was a round robin system. They talk about the farm bot here, which is still a sore point for a number of people. The original promise was that the farm bots were the only way that you could mine the premium currency in Townstar, which at the time was going to be called Boxcoin. 
I think that when they moved away from Boxcoin, the farm bot was left without a purpose. That's a shame, as some people paid crazy amounts of money for a fully completed farm bot based on the promises and the valuation that the company implied. Eric even released a spreadsheet with the prices he said that the company was planning on charging for the individual farm bot pieces. Those totaled around $100,000, which in turn helped peg the price for a later auction. We'll get to that auction in next year's video. The last bit I'll point out is the voting consensus for adding new games. At the time of this draft, it required an 80% vote for games to be added or funded. Again, this will be important later on. Back to the timeline. In July of 2020, node owners started receiving distro reports via email according to my sources. Here's an example of one. They also said that since there was no exchange to trade this 1155 token, people were basically making up their own prices and trading the token among themselves. Everything was peer-to-peer -peer at this point. Things were starting to ramp up in Discord as well around this time. People were busy with the referrals as they were getting paid BTC for people joining Gala Gold. That's a pretty sweet deal. Speaking of points, here's another distro from later this year. Now take a look at that top account. You may notice that it's the same one as in the other distro we looked at. Turns out there's a reason this account was getting so many points, and it had nothing to do with owning nodes. It turns out that this wallet was controlled by Gala Games themselves. It was set up as a referral account, and how it allegedly worked was that anytime someone created an account at Gala Games and hadn't been referred already, it counted that as a Gala Games referral and credited it to this account. So when that person created an account, purchased Gala Gold, bought a node, etc., all of those actions counted as points for this Gala Games account. People started to notice, and Ben Blast, who was the first mod of the Gala Games Discord and was later a Gala Games employee, confronted Eric about it in August of 2020. You can find all of these screenshots below in the description. When asked, Eric, benefactor, admitted they did control the account and confirmed that Gala was automatically counting all organic traffic as their own referrals. Because of this, that wallet was getting hundreds of points in the nightly distro, and therefore a large chunk of the 25% that was supposed to be distributed to node owners and outside referrers. Binblast called Eric to task about this, saying that Gala was basically double dipping their own rewards. Since Gala Games got 75% of the nightly distro anyway, and now they were also receiving the most referral awards from the remaining 25%. Eric's justification was that Gala was spending money on marketing, so they deserve to recoup those costs even if it's detrimental to the early supporters. Personally, I can somewhat see his logic here. I don't agree with it, but that's partially because of how shady they were about it. If they would have told everyone, hey, we have this account, this is how it works, and this is why we're doing it, I would be a lot more forgiving. But that's not what they were doing. In fact, they were using this account in their emails as an example of how much other people could earn. This is the type of behavior I expect from a secondhand car dealership, not Gala Games. Anyway, despite Binblast's best efforts, nothing much happened about it at the time. But that referral account would cause even more drama later. And the business. We call this foreshadowing. Referrals were everywhere. In fact, it seemed like even the nodes were going to get into the referral business, where the plan was to have leader nodes where everyone referred by the node owner would have their transactions routed through that node for higher payouts. If you're wondering why all the emphasis on referrers during this time, it's because Gala Games was doing business with two companies, Connect, which we've already discussed, and Daxio, run by a gentleman who was living in Thailand. Eric has said many times that he dislikes going the usual route for user acquisition, and it seems like Daxio and Connect were two of the ways that he sidestepped that, at least partially. Now, Daxio had a rather checkered past at the time of this post, and I find it funny that Eric mentions it hasn't blown up yet. It wasn't until a few years later that Daxio ran into issues. The woman that Eric is referring to was one of the early direct marketers for Gala Games. She was also allegedly involved with Force Age, one of the largest crypto Ponzi schemes at the time. Referrals and direct marketing have been baked into Gala's DNA since the beginning. Without purchasers slash investors for their nodes and NFTs, Gala would have never gotten off the ground. These MLM companies and tactics, for better or worse, provided those early buyers. Of course, they also brought their own challenges and risks, as we're seeing with the bevy of lawsuits and SEC investigations. Over the next few years, we'll see Gala trying to distance itself from these relationships and these sales tactics. Interestingly enough though, at the time of this video's creation and with revenue streams drying up, Gala has just signaled its intent to bring back the referral program. 
we'll have to see what form it takes going forward. Anyway, back to the timeline. Once they batch minted the 1155 token, it appears they started sending it out to the various node owners and referrers, swapping out their database entry soft tokens for things actually on the blockchain. Of course, this came with its own challenges. As anyone who has sent an 1155 knows, transferring them can be expensive. Gala would be sending millions of these 1155s to hundreds of people and incur transaction costs with each transfer. There are screenshots of Eric saying they're spending tens of thousands of dollars with every distribution. To combat this, at least at first, they'd only send them out weekly. Sometimes gas prices on Ethereum would be so high that delays would happen, but they seem to be pretty good about letting people know in Discord. In the end, it just wasn't very efficient. So in September of 2020, they moved to the ERC-20 token. This is the Gala token that most people think of as version 1. I've exported the first few months of transactions with this Gala coin and made it available on Google Sheets. That link is below. As you can see, there's a bunch of preliminary minting. One might even call it a pre-mint. I'm just kidding. The primary reason for this minting is that they needed to swap out the 1155 token for the new ones. Over the next week, 25 billion Gala was minted. We'll need to go back to the right Thurston filings to match up some transactions, but of note is that he received 1.97 billion Gala and Eric received 2.36 billion Gala for the work their nodes did. Evidently, Eric found a way to make his nodes work because he ended up with more rewards than Wright did. Gala Games ended up with 19 billion tokens, and then the remaining 2 billion was sent out to the node owners and referrers who had been with them since July of 2019. September was also a big month for Gallup because they got their first exchange listing. Another reason they wanted to move to the ERC-20 token is that those were preferred by the exchanges themselves, and Bitru listed the new ERC-20 token on September 14th, 2020. Users could even buy it via credit cards with Simplex. I have a special spot of hatred in my heart for Simplex just because I have a ton of cancelled transactions that would have made me a lot of money later on, but I'll admit I did use it quite a bit in the early days of Gala. Keep in mind that Gala was still sending out distributions every week or so, and even with the ERC-20 token, it was incurring quite a bit of cost to them. But they had a plan. On November 17th, the treasure chest system went live. This allowed Gala Games to pass the mining cost to the user. This is still how it's done at the time of this video as well, with the treasure chest renamed Gala Chain Allowance. Mint those to the Gala Chain, and then pay a bridging fee to bring them to your ETH wallet. In this way, the user decides when they want to mint their tokens, and the cost is incurred by them. In late November, Gala came out with a post on Medium, outlining how they saw their nodes working. If you go to this link today, you'll see this, which is roughly how things work today. The problem with Medium is that it allows after-the-fact edits, which Gala has been known to do. It's always a good idea to go back and find the original page info. Plugging the same page into the Wayback Machine will get you this instead. Here you'll see more info on how the paid nodes and free nodes were going to work, as well as some more verbiage about the hard cap of 50k grandfather nodes, now called founder nodes, that were ever going to exist. They've obviously done away with such things as the rental and paid nodes, but game nodes of today are filling some of those holes. I found Gala in December, so we're just starting to get to the time when I can speak from my own experiences rather than just secondhand conversation and online documents. This ecosystem article is the one that I referenced in my Reddit post. That said, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, in December of 2020. The price of the Gala token at this time is still in the .0002 range, but that won't last for long. Exciting times were ahead for Gala. In the next video, we'll cover the crazy year of 2021. See you then!